Now what we're going to do is use these media queries to make that two column code that we created responsive. Okay, and that essentially means first we need to create a structure and employ it on the site so that we can see that it's responsive. So we're going to come back over here to the skin editor and then go to our front page and we're going to create some containers or some boxes. The first box we're going to create is an HTML container and we're going to call this two equal columns. And remember that we gave that, when we created that package, we gave it a class of columns two. Okay, so we're going to give this a class of columns two. And then we'll do a left and right column. So another HTML container. And two columns left. And remember, we gave those columns a class of half. And we're going to do the right one. Two columns. Whoops, what happened here? Oh, great. <laughs> I just lost it all. I have to do that again. No, I've got those containers right here. Excellent. Container. Add the box. Okay. I just didn't save them, right? So, two equal columns. And that's columns two. Oh, thank you. I was on the home page, not the front page. I hate it when that happens. Okay, let's go back to this container. Add the box. Columns two. And then the next one. Two columns left. Give it a class of half. And then the last one. Two columns right. You bit the class of half. Let's see. Shift drag right into two columns. And then I'm going to create two widget boxes. I mean, I'm sorry, two text boxes. To provide some sort of content. It's going to be left box. left text box and right text box okay shift drag right into the right column shift drag left into the two columns shift drag two equal columns into the container and then drag the container down here let's see we'll drag the container down below columns okay save our template look at our template And you can see that 
our code was applied, right? The two column code that we wrote was applied here because we have two columns sitting here side by side. And if we inspect the element, you can see that the columns two and columns two half and all that stuff has been applied to this. So it's all that's all working fine. However, if we come over to the responsinator and refresh that same page, while it's working fine, it's not going to create the desired result. At least not in every case. So here we go, get down to that. Now you can see that 50% makes each one very small, right? Which means we need to come up with some responsive code then to fix that. And you know, maybe it's okay in this larger view, especially this larger view. All right, maybe that's okay, but it's not okay in the smaller views. So, what we need to do is make that stuff stack. And the way we're going to do that is come over to our skin editor, or go to custom CSS, and we are going to create a new style that's not going to be inside of media all because media all is too big for this I'm sorry the min width one we're not going to use here so what we're going to do is use the next one down or the, the the first one that he uses which is for the large mobile view which is using the total width copy that what we're going to do now is consistent with the way Chris has done his responsive columns so we'll come to the bottom of this and paste it and then what we're going to do is take this Actually, we're going to take both of those. Yeah. Okay. And then let's just get our tabbing correct. Oops, that didn't happen. There we go. And instead of width of 50%, what we're going to say is width is 100%. And instead of floating left, we're going to say float none. Whoops. Except not float none in caps. All right, because what we want these things to do is no longer stack side by side, but we want them to stack on top of each other and we want them to be the width of the whatever space is available to them so we're going to add the one media query and then inside that media query do this so if we save our custom CSS and refresh our custom CSS scroll down here and see that now our stuff is sitting here side by side now notice the the difference in width here that's because Chris has reduced the width on the of the padding on the columns so we're gonna do the same thing we are also going to come up here and take the padding stuff Well, actually, what we're really going to do here is just do it in the shortcut way. Padding, colon. And so we're going to use x half in, instead of x single here. So top actually is going to stay x single. So we'll do x single for the top. And then x half for the left. Whoops, x single for the top. x half for the left. 
zero p x for the bottom and x single for the right. Or, I'm sorry. Actually, this is top and it's half. <laughs> this is top, right, bottom, left. And so that will reduce the padding in the media view. Save that. Refresh this. And now, you know, we've got more room for text. We don't have as much padding sitting there. Okay, that works just fine as a solution. And you can see how well it works here, right? But it could be that for these larger devices, maybe you want them to sit side by side in the larger device. And if that's the case, then we should, we need to change our, our media query. And uh, one way to do that is simply to change the media query that's affected here, right? So we could come back over to this and we could say that instead of W total, we could replace it with, which it was W sidebar, as I recall, no W content and save it now. So now we've changed it out so that in the smaller devices, they still stack on top of each other. But in these larger devices, they sit side by side. Okay. And yet in the smaller devices, they stack. So that's something you can do, right? To play around with those. Yeah, this is the larger device. So it stacks. Play around with that and allows you to, to let this stuff float at 50% wide. And in fact, maybe the thing to do is to reduce the padding on this. And if you're going to reduce the padding on that, then what you would do is... copy this and instead of WP content you'd have you'd use the WP total or W total I'm sorry W total and so you'd you would still reduce the padding for the larger view but maintain its width and float and then on the smaller view you would bring it to a hundred percent and in that case actually we aren't going to need that here because if it's here then it automatically happens here unless we change it so if we save custom CSS and come back over and take a look at this in the responsinator again All right, we still have the narrow padding on either side of the smaller view. But we also have the narrow padding on either side in this slightly wider view. Okay. So that is that aspect of it.